<clears throat> well, long tall long haul tanker here with you this afternoon. Thank you for joining me. It is Saturday, the fourteenth uh, of January, two thousand and twenty-three, at approximately fifteen fifteen Central Time. That's three fifteen in the afternoon, and. Uh, have I got a show plan for you, a real brain teaser of sorts. But first, let me get a sip of my morning coffee that I'm still finishing off. All right, if you're watching me on YouTube, I say thank you for joining me. Welcome, uh, hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment if you so desire go on over to The Shaving Cadre, www.theshavingcadre.com and join in the conversation. It's a lot of fun, wet shavers, straight shavers, honers, whiskey drinkers, cigar smokers, all kinds of stuff going on over there. All right, the equipment for today. I'm starting on the next roll up, which the next three roll ups will be largely um, vintage razors of various sorts and types. And today we're featuring the uh, Easy Aces uh, by Genco, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Easy Aces, nice scale, nice inlay, five eighths, kind of a square point there. And so I've used this on video before, a very uh, narrow uh, piece of steel uh, it was honed up on an Arkansas Dan's uh, 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 hard black, or commonly called a surgical black. All right, and for the soap today, uh, what is this? Ariana and Evans, the undersea. So it's got a bit of an aquatic scent to it and uh, it's really quite pleasant. I like it just fine, very fine even. Uh, also uh, broke out a new uh, uh, Allen Block, Allen Block, uh, who's that from? Ozma, that's an Ozma Allen Block. And uh, for the brush, we're using the uh, QED Select Manturian Silver Tip Badger. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know why this camera doesn't focus any better. Anyway, 26 millimeter, just an absolute dream of a nut and affordable as well. Uh, their 24, their 26 are under $100. Their 28 is just over $100 and uh, you can't go wrong uh, with those. You will, you will be amazed at just how uh, soft yet uh, sufficient backbone. So let me get the, uh, oops, I forgot my towel. Hang on just a second. Got to put my towel down here on the sink so it'll catch my drippings and make it a little softer pad there. All right, let's take off the top water. And so we're lathering. So here's the brain teaser. I got to start this off by uh, when I got down to the truck yesterday, I was told that the truck would, uh, the trailer would be back loaded uh, on the yard by about four or five o'clock tomorrow, yesterday afternoon. <clears throat> and it was, and I called dispatch and I said, uh, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna be there right at that time. I'm gonna come down just a little bit later and leave on Saturday morning. I had my route all planned up. I knew exactly where I was gonna go and blah, 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 blah. Uh, my first stop last night was intended to be uh, Guthrie, Oklahoma, just north of uh, Oklahoma City at the, the Love's Truck Stop there. 
which is one of my favorite ones. It's a new constructed building, three or four years old, plenty of showers, plenty of parking. And I could leave there early in the morning and know I'd get there by say four o'clock in the afternoon. <clears throat> and, uh, but having been off for seven days, I was, I was ready to get rolling. I was rare, raring to roll. And so I took off from the yard last night uh, at about 9 p.m. Had a couple of trailer issues. I had to run by the shop, get those taken care of. That, that can consume some time. Nobody, <laughs> nobody likes that. Uh, I hadn't started my clock yet, so I wasn't worried too much. I wasn't worried at all about burning time. And so I departed the yard at about nine o'clock. My primary goal, having started last night, was to get through Dallas. I wanted to go up Interstate 45 from Houston, go through Dallas, and get that ugly obstacle out of my way. That way I didn't have to go through it. Uh, during the daytime, during high traffic volume, and uh, I was successful in that particular <laughs> goal. And I ended up spending the night, that was a six hour, so I, a six hour drive from the yard to Ardmore, Oklahoma. Uh, got in there at about 2.30 a.m., which is very uncommon for me to drive at night like that. But this is a long trip and I wanted to give myself every advantage on time. Going to Edmonton, Alberta to uh, Gibbons, And as I started this trip and started going up, I, now, what I'm fixing to tell you and lay before you is a complicated legal hours of service strategy, and it's called the split sleeper berth. I say it's complicated, it's really not but you have to think through it and have a good grasp. And most of the people I talk to have no idea about how it works. And it's really quite interesting. I, don't, I can't say that it's always an advantage, but sometimes it is. And today and last night, it turns out to be an advantage. Now, here's how it works. So I drove six hours from Houston to Ardmore. And when I stopped last night, I left on the drive clock, those six hours, six from 11, you get 11 driving hours. I had a full complement of hours when I left the yard. Um, for the day and the week, I had 11 driving hours, 14 on duty hours, and 70 hours for an eight day week. I'd been off for uh, seven days. I had a full set, full complement of hours. Okay, so I drove the six hours to Ardmore. And when I went off duty, went to sleeper berth, and this is why they call it a split sleeper berth, you're required at the end of your driving day or when you've exhausted your hours to take a 10 hour sleeper berth break. Okay, fine. That way when you wake up the next morning, you got a full set of hours, 11 and 14 and off you go. However, there's this rule in the hours of service regulations with DOT called split sleeper berth. And essentially, the, the, the front part of that is easy to understand. When I went to sleeper berth, I had five hours left on my clock. You take an eight hour, not a 10 hour, but an eight hour sleeper berth break, 
And at the end of that, you get those five, whatever remains when you went to sleep or birth, you get those back. So in my case, I had those five hours. I got those five hours back. I didn't have 11, but I had five. All right. <clears throat> and a lot of people have always ha have struggled with this so very hard. And it's so very simple. But you got to have a little bit of imagination on how it works. Because there, there's no clock ticking that's going to tell you how it works, you have to understand it with the imagination. And so I, I said to my safety manager one time, I said, do you understand how this works? And he said, well, not really. I said, I'm going to figure this thing out because there has to be an advantage is that once you've taken your first eight hour break, it's your 10 hour break is split into two shifts, an eight hour break and a two hour break. What's the advantage gained after you take the two hour break? And I could never get an answer to that. Everybody knew about the advantage on the front side. That is to say, after you take your eight hour break, but nobody could ever answer what the advantage was after you stopped and did a two hour break. All right, now imagine, after I've taken my eight hour break and I get those five, hour back, five hours back, whatever remained on the clock when I went to sleep or birth the first time, and then I drove <clears throat> any number, you know, anything not over five hours in that second shift of driving, It doesn't matter as long as you don't go over your limit. And then you stop and do a two hour break. What, what's the advantage gained? <clears throat> so imagine when you start your clock back up after the uh, eight hour break and you get those five, hour ba uh, five hours back or whatever remained on the clock to begin with. Imagine is as if there was an imaginary full set of hours for the day, 11 driving and 14 on duty, that as soon as you went on duty or started driving, that that was also, that also started in the background. Okay, so you have an imaginary clock that started in the background. And so as I drove, as I drive out, however many hours I drive out, as long as it doesn't exceed what I left on before, in my case, those five hours, and I stop and I do a two hour break. However many hours I drove or on duty, would be subtracted from that imaginary full set of hours, okay? And so that way, after you've done your two hour break, you would receive the remainder <clears throat> of those hours from which the, re the previous remainder was subtracted from the imaginary number. So I drove approximately three hours today uh, I'm, I am in Tatanqua, Oklahoma. And I'm exercising my two hour break here. What time did I say it was after?
after three o'clock. Remember, I woke up this morning after an eight hour break uh, with five hours on my drive clock. I drove three, but now I'm taking the, the second break, the two hour break. And I have to be on sleeper berth on duty, driving sleeper berth off duty. This is a fine sharp razor. So I am in the middle of that two hour break. The hours that I drove this morning will be subtracted from that imaginary clock that's running in the background. So I anticipate when I get back to the truck that I'm going to, ha after the two hour break has uh, been completed, and I expect to be off duty here or you know, on sleeper berth doing my shower and shave for about two and a half to three hours with the pre-shave stropping and the shower and shave and the post-shave cleanup, uh, two and a half to three hours, which I've calculated into my day. And so I anticipate at the completion When I get back to the truck, I'm gonna have approximately eight hours on my drive clock. That's my anticipation. And I've only practiced this or executed this uh, exercise. This is, the, this is either the second or the third time I've done this in the last couple of years since I've come to understand it. And I've asked drivers before, do you ever use the split sleeper berth? Oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works. And so for me, now here's the advantage to me. If I had left this morning from the yard early, okay, fine, I left early. Oh, that's just, that's just wonderful. Uh, if I had left, you know, let's just say four or five o'clock this morning and driven to Guthrie or Tonkawa, Oklahoma. Uh, okay, fine. That's that's as far as I would have gotten. Uh, Guthrie is eight and a half hours from the yard. Tonka was one hour further, so it'd be nine and a half hours from the yard. Lovely scent on the soap, by the way. Just and the brush is just fantastic. Now here's the advantage to me. I'm two hours from the Luz truck stop in McPherson, Kansas, which is north of Wichita. And so my original goal for Saturday night was to be in either Guthrie, Oklahoma or Tonkawa 
but now by the end of Saturday night, by exercising this, well, first of all, by leaving at nine o'clock last night and driving into the wee hours, and then exercising a split sleeper berth, I have now made it by the end of today at about six or seven, six thirty, seven o'clock tonight. I will be in McPherson, Kansas, about three hours ahead of where I anticipated being. And uh, on a long trip like this to Edmonton, Gibbons, you want every, I want every advantage in time uh, and distance that I can scrape out. And so, and the, the reason a lot of drivers have a hard time understanding, and you ought to listen to some of the drivers talk too about this crazy math formula that, that they try to, but that's the, the secret to understanding this is that you don't see it, there's no way to know until you've actually done it. But that's the formula, is that there's an imaginary clock running in the background when you start, that, that uh, work shift, driving shift, after your eight hour break, there's an imaginary, not the 10 hour break, but the eight hour break. <clears throat> there's an imaginary clock. Now, here's something I just discovered new on my time clock uh, in the truck, is that once I place myself on duty, there's an information page that comes up. And there's one line, one line that says, you you are going to gain hours, driving hours, uh, in two hours. And it gave me the time. So I went off duty at a certain time. I was going to gain additional hours in two hours time. It gave me the time um, at when that would happen. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, how does, well, how does it know, how does that computer clock no, I'm going to gain hours in two hours. And what hours are those? This is the first time I've ever seen an onboard First time I've ever seen an onboard uh, driver's clock. We use the PeopleNet system, uh, which is constantly being updated and revised and et cetera, et cetera. But today, and I don't do this all the time, but it's the first time I have seen the onboard driver's time clock computer acknowledge the split sleeper berth. And it's really quite exciting. It's fun stuff. It's about, and that's about as complicated as my life gets. A lot of these remote places, and I'm changing subjects now, to uh, my destination location in Gibbons, Alberta.
there's a lot of these places in rural Canada uh, that don't have what we would re normally regard as a proper um, address. And they're difficult to find. Um, what I did was I went to my iPhone, Apple Maps, typed in the name of the place that I was going and it found it, but there was no address. It did give me GPS coordinates, Boy, that don't look good. So I found the location on the uh, Apple Maps, but not in my Rand McNally truck GPS, either by address or cross street. The names of the street on the iPhone, Apple Maps, <clears throat> is different than the street names that are programmed into the, uh, into the uh, Apple Maps, which I found like, uh, What's the name of that? Road Range Range Road Range Road Range Road two two zero. It found that one, but it wouldn't find the cross street where the plant is located. To the, uh, to the south of Redwater, east of uh, Gibbons. That's not far. And it's very easy to find using the Apple Maps. But I just find it odd that the Rand McNally is not finding it. That kind of disturbs me. But I found where I'm going. I've looked at it on satellite map. I see where the main entrance gate is. And those are all things that I look for when I'm trying to get my bearings of where I'm going, but I've still got three, four days to get there. So tomorrow, I make it to McPherson tonight. Tomorrow will be either Sydney, Nebraska or Cheyenne, Wyoming.
when I get to McPherson, two hours away, after I get my eight hours back, <clears throat> I'm just going to drive to McPherson and call it a night at uh, about seven o'clock tonight or so, 7.30, whatever, 6.30, 7.30. But every time I get there, and then tomorrow I will start as if I were on a regular day shift driving. And then uh, Casper, not Casper, uh, Sydney, Nebraska, or Cheyenne. And then after that will be Hardin, Montana. Put a little bit of lather back on that bleeding spot. I want to thank everybody that uh, writes to me and leaves me the uh, comments on the YouTube uh, comment section. Uh, I appreciate all that very much. Sure do. I forgot to do something. I'm feeling, feeling a little bit of the pressure. I'm still on the clock. I say on the clock, I'm on sleeper birth. I'm counting down those two hours, but I don't want to waste time either. And I want to get into uh, McPherson at a, uh, a decent time. And so I'm forgetting, I forgot, to, I forgot to come across the chin this way. I'll get this video posted up sometime tonight. <clears throat> but I thought you'd be interested in that little discussion about the split sleeper birth and uh, things that go through my mind, calculations that I make.
And so it's been a nice day, lovely day in Oklahoma. No issues coming through Oklahoma City. None worth mentioning, none that stick out in my mind. That's not to say that I didn't have to dodge some idiot along the way. But it's kind of like an everyday occurrence anyway. This is a very nice shave. I'm carrying a uh, Class 9 miscellaneous hazmat. It is placarded. But Class 9 is the least hazardous. And you can tell by looking at the side of the trailer and the placards that a uh, hazmat truck is uh, posted on the side, on the, on the, the four sides of the trailer. By law, if, if it's designated as a hazmat product, he's got to be placarded. Now, some guys try to get away, usually because they don't have placards for their the product. Uh, and so they'll run out of the, the plant non-placarded, but they get nailed if they get called, if they get called into a, uh, uh, way station and get inspected that's a lot of ifs and a lot of people are willing to run that it's not a good thing and i'm going to tell you something i don't know why a lot of this stuff that goes on it's kind of nonsensical because once a truck gets a load all that paperwork and all that information can just as easily be transmitted electronically to all interested and concerned parties, including the national DOT. And why that doesn't happen, so that it can be instantly brought up on screen by using some national database. And, you know, tractor number, trailer number, VIN number, uh, and then the most recent load. Yeah, that's something I've never understood. Even the uh, bill of lading, certificate of analysis on the on the product, and all other relevant paperwork isn't transmitted to the receiver, but it's not by email attachment or some other means. Uh, no, I got to carry a piece of paper with me.
and more than one. Many a time I've gone across the uh, Canadian border, either on the Ontario side or the Alberta side. And the uh, Canadian uh, agent, he'll say to me, what are you hauling? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> it's on the paperwork. <laughs> he says, uh, you mean you don't know what you're hauling? All I know is that it's a is that it, it's a, a class three flammable or a class nine miscellaneous or a class eight acid. Really, he says, that's all you know? He said, don't you haul this stuff all the time? I said, no, it's something new every week. Oh, he says, well, what happens if there's an emergency? I'll tell you what my safety manager told me. If there's an emergency, run like hell. An emergency being defined as a, a fire or a spill. Now, I'm not equipped or, or uh, trained or outfitted to uh, deal with a roadside emergency. Which you may find that very disturbing. Uh, curious, if nothing else. No, we're not trained for that. That's what the hazmat rescue teams are for. Uh, yeah, we just had a spill on highway, you know. Well, we're about three hours out because those hazmat rescue teams are just not around the corner, you know. I'm learning something about this razor being honed on a uh, surgical black. This thing is sharp.
Well, I'll let you know on uh, the next video how that split sleeper birth experiment turned out. I say experiment, it's not really an experiment. I'm just nearly 100% confident it's gonna work out just the way I explained it. So my next shave may or may not be tomorrow night, which probably means, yeah, it'll be tomorrow night. <laughs> I, I, yo, I love this stuff and the, the soaps and the brushes and the razors. And the talking about the uh, the exercises of the day that you know truck driving and and uh, and uh, just there was something else I was going to add to that list. Oh, the obvious recording. I keep saying I want to cut back, and I do. It, it's it's tiresome sometimes, and it's um, it's not hard. I made mention to a new guy over at the Shaving Gondre. I said, "You're going to record your shaves, put some videos up." He said, "Oh no, that's too much work." It's really not. All I got to do is turn the camera on when I start shaving. I got to carry my mount with me from the truck to the shower room, which is no imposition at all. Uh, the thing that's in, the thing that's the imposition is and and using i uh, i movies i slap it together the movie is done inside of 5 10 minutes the imposition is especially in i movies you've got to save it so it will upload to youtube and that takes 20 30 minutes and then once you go into YouTube and bring the video in and get all that information typed out, it, uh, and then you hit the upload button, it takes in the truck on using uh, Verizon Wireless, it takes anywhere from two to five, six hours a night. And so I've got to leave, and, and, and if the video screen goes off on the iPad, Then you gotta start over. So you gotta set on in the settings, you know, you gotta set it to where the screen never goes off. Which again, that takes two seconds. So the real in position and the thing that bothers me the most is that while it's uploading and taking five, six hours in the truck, I've got to leave the screen on and I'm trying to get some sleep and
But truth be told, I love doing these videos. You know, I know my wife calls me handsome. Uh, but, you know, I'm 63 years old. How handsome is that? That feels fine. All right, let's wash it off. And see what we got. I'm not. I'm not too worried right now about the the little weepers I've got. They'll be healed up before I get done with the head shave, probably. Oh yeah, I'm doing a head shave. I'm gonna tell you something. Comparing this razor with the Fox cutlery that I uh, used yesterday, no comparison. This, hands down, this one right here on a, on a surgical black versus Zulu gray. which tells me something that I gotta, I'm gonna have to experiment with. You know, once you have the bevel set, you can refinish the stone on anything you want to with minimal, almost non-existent removal of metal. I can't remember sometimes which Arkansas stone I've used to hone up a particular razor, but I think I'm going to go back and take that uh, Fox cutlery and, and do it up on the uh, True Hard. It's not the translucent, it's not the surgical black, it's the True Hard. Um, and I'll show it to you, I'll do it on video. when I get home in about 10 days. Okay. Putting a lid back on my soap and I'll put it over here out of the way. I feel a little something under my chin there, and I'm gonna use the gold dollar here.
I know you're supposed to use cold water, and I normally would, except I'm not going to. I got the hot water running, I want another bowl of hot water. And uh, besides that, does it really matter? No. That does not fall under the category of things that matter. So I overloaded the brush. I can probably cut back by at least a third on how much soap I lathered out of the and I can't remember if I've used that soap on camera before. I don't believe I have. I think I haven't used it, but just a couple of times since I bought it. And I counted through the number of soaps I got left that I bought from last spring and early summer that I still have yet to work through on camera. Are you ready for this? 10. I've got 10. Now I've used them at least once at home, all of them, I think but uh, on camera to take them out on a week-long trip like I do, I, I still got 10 to work through. And that just <laughs> that blows my mind. But you know what? I am having fun. And then to bring all of those products, soaps and whatnot onto the video and share with you and let you get a look at, you know, it may be something you don't have, maybe something you want, you know, so. Happy to be of service. That's how much soap I got left, and there's still lots in the in the in the knot. because of time constraints and trying to stay ahead of the clock and not burn up more than my two hour break, but I know I'm going to, it's gonna be about three hours by the time I get rolling again. Um, I did not strop up the uh, gold dollar. So I just, that was a shortcut. But I'll, I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll strop it up and clean it up along with all my gear on the post shave cleanup and strapping. Because I'm in the truck the way that I am and shaving on the road as I am. Yeah, I've got to be very careful about my tools, make sure that they're getting the best treatment that I can give them. You know, every day, you know, I see a lot of postings on different forums and such about how to travel with the straight gear. Not so much about how to get through uh, uh, TSA inspections at the airport, but you know, what kind of oil to use? Or I, I made a comment in a video 
and a, and a fellow responded to me and said, thank you for saying you use baby oil. I was stressing over what kind of oil to use to preserve the razor. And I do, I use baby oil, just ordinary Walmart, Johnson & Johnson, it don't matter. Uh, all baby oil is mineral oil with just a little bit of perfume for the scent that it gives off. <clears throat> and it's perfectly acceptable for preserving razors uh, with the mineral oil content. It's just, it's, and it's cheap as dirt. But I've seen people use sewing machine oil. I've seen people use WD-40. I've seen people use specialty oils that were made. Of course, you know, canal, uh, that Japanese oil, I forget the name of it, but I've read about it. You know, I think I even got some that some guy sent me. But I don't use it because I can use the other a whole lot more cheaply. And I've been using baby oil for uh, the duration that I've been shaving with using straight razors for seven and a half years and never have had a problem. That was the oil's fault. Now, you know, let's not talk about my problem child, Whacker, why it's staining and corroding, I don't know. But it's not the oil, it can't be. It's not storing them in leather either. Some would argue that. Oh, you're not supposed to let it. Yeah, okay. I've been storing my, I say storing, I don't really store them, they just are there because the, the, the leather roll-ups are what I carry the razors in when I'm on the road. And when I'm at home and I come home from the road, I just take one leather roll up out of my bag, put it over there, grab the next one and put it in my bag. So that's just kind of a, a no brainer to me. That's just where they are. It's not, okay, you can say they're stored there, but okay. If that makes you feel better that, yep, I store them in leather. And I, I don't know what the issue is. Not very breathable, I guess, maybe. I don't know, but I've never had a problem. And I've got seven. Well, I take that back. I got six leather roll-ups. And the, the seventh roll-up is denim. So I started the shave at 3.15 central time, 15.15. I know I have probably gone close to an hour and seven minutes. So that's four o'clock. So it's almost 4.30, I su suspect right about now. And so my two hour break is over or real close to being over right now. So when I get back to the truck here in just a few minutes, um, we'll see if my little time experiment worked, which I'm sure it did.
Okay, I think that's gonna do. Let me check my side buttons. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> All right, that's it. I wanna say thank you for joining me. And if you're watching me right now, at the end of this video and you fast forwarded, or, but drop me a line. If you've never written to me before, just drop me a line and say, I'm watching you now at the end. You, know, you can say you like it, don't like it. Don't tell me it's too long. I already know it's too long, okay? I'm not gonna fix that. Uh, but uh, anyway, thank you for watching me and I will see you down the road, bye.